Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. So when it comes to storing your hard-earned cash from a long day's work, you've got two major institutions to choose where to put it. So you can choose between storing your money in a bank or in a credit union. But what exactly is the difference? Does it matter which one you pick? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, if you're wondering any of that, then you're in the right place because this is exactly what we're going to cover on today's show. I'm going to cover the differences between a bank and a credit unit at a high level. Then we'll take a deeper dive into the products, some of the interest rates, the services, the tech that you can expect. And then stay tuned to the end because as someone who's actively has about 30 different bank accounts open between banks and credit unions, I will then share some of my personal experience with you working with both institutions so you can make an informed decision the next time you're shopping for a new banking home. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. Okay, so first up, let's talk about credit unions at the high level. What is a credit union? Well, generally speaking, credit unions are much smaller in scale than banks. You're usually talking about a regional or very local community-based financial institution, though that's not always the case. Credit unions can be national. Think of Navy Federal Credit Union, for example. They're by the largest credit union in the country, and obviously they are nationwide. But but generally speaking, you're talking about a very local community-based financial center. Now, the interesting part here is when you talk about joining a credit union, you never talk about joining a bank. You talk about joining a credit union because when you open an account with a credit union, what you're actually doing is becoming a member of the credit union. And this is done by what they call purchasing or having a share of the credit union. So when you open your account, deposit, account, whatever, checking, savings, you'll at least be required to put about $5 in. It has to remain on deposit for your whole time while you're banking with that credit union. This becomes what's known as your membership share. This is your share in the credit union. Now, this might sound a little bit weird because we don't really think about becoming members of banks. It's not a club or anything, but when you talk about credit unions, credit unions are not for profit, right? So if you talk about a JP Morgan, they're clearly out to make money. Credit unions, on the other hand, being community-based and local, they are not for profit, which means they are not owned by shareholders. They're not publicly traded. They are owned by the members, and that is how you gain membership by getting that membership share. Now, that means they're actually governed by a board of directors as there are no shareholders. And that board of directors is usually comprised of, you know, members on the credit union or members of the community who have, you know, a much larger share in the uh, credit union. Now, banks, on the other hand, almost complete opposite here. They are definitely for profit. Make no mistake about it. They are for profit. They are publicly traded. You don't get ownership shares in a bank. Instead, you can just open your account. And if you want to have ownership in the bank, then you have to buy shares on the open market through your Schwab or your Robinhood account, something like that. As a result, you're not going to get a say how the bank operates. Trust me, they do not care about your opinion on anything that they're doing, which is a little bit, which is another big difference between them and a credit union. So at the highest level, that's the difference. Now let's drill down a little bit and take a look at the products next. And as I know, everyone's very interesting about credit cards, of course. So when we talk financial products offered between a credit union and a bank, again, they're both financial institutions. So they're offering very similar products. You're going to see home loans, auto loans, savings accounts, checking accounts, home equity lines. You're going to see all those products. You could even see credit cards at a credit union. Now, sometimes these credit cards are not nearly as competitive as like a city custom cash would be, and we'll get into that in a second. Now, some other differences here in products. On the credit union side, you're probably going to see more family, more community-focused products, so you might see a wider range of checking and savings accounts. You're going to see accounts for children. You're going to see accounts for teens, college kids, all the way up, and a lot of times you're going to see those accounts not actually have any fees or minimum balances associated to them. Where on the other hand, obviously banks can have all of those products, family products. You know, I know Chase has just started up a a children's checking account to try to get kids in very soon. So it's not to say that banks can't do that as well. Credit unions have just been focused on that and the community needs longer. Now, on the banking side, another difference you could see is wealth management products and, you know, trading platforms and things like that. For example, Bank of America owns Merrill Lynch. They bought them, you know, way back when in 2008. So they have a whole investment arm set up is where credit unions, I'm not going to say they can't help you out with wealth management, but they are not, more than likely, they are not going to have a whole division like O'Merrill Lynch attached to them. And then very similar when it comes to the business arm of these things as well. You know, credit unions can definitely help you with your business banking needs. But again, when you talk about the big guys here, banks, and even regional banks for that matter, they're going to have at least a banker or two on staff that is really focused on business banking and products around that. You take Chase, for example, obviously they've got business checking, business 
cards, but they also have you know the hardware, the scanners for credit cards for taking payments and things like that. It's where you just might not get that level of detail with a credit union. Now I did touch on credit cards very briefly there, and I can say they're not, generally they're not as competitive. Now, again, there's a Navy Federal Credit Union out there that's a massive credit union. It's actually the biggest credit union, and their cards are fairly competitive for a credit union. And this comes back to being for-profit versus non-for-profit. You see, with a bank being for-profit, you're going to see cards with annual fees. You're going to see higher interest rates on loan products and things like that, places where they can earn back the money for giving out reward points. Credit unions, on the other hand, not not so much. Now, yes, credit unions still need to make operating income and things like that, so they're not giving everything away for free, but credit unions are supposed to be in the best interest of the members, and what's in the best interest of the members is often not really what's in the best interest for the bank. So remember, if I'm making a ton of reward points and you're making a ton of reward points, someone has to pay for that because the bank's not going to pay for that. So banks fund all of our reward points, you know, sprees by having other people pay interest and pay fees and things like that who might not be as savvy as you and I. So with credit union, you don't really have all of that, so their products aren't going to be as competitive in the reward space. And that transitions us over nicely to interest rates. Now, one of the things credit unions are best known for is having more favorable interest rates than banks. And I do want to be clear here, because I'm not saying that if you walk into a credit union, you know, they're going to give you like a 1% rate on a financial product. And if you go to a bank, they're going to give you like a 10% rate. Everyone in the banking market and industry is still playing off of the same interest rates to a degree. Now, there's always some playroom on which, uh, which financial institution sets what rate for their own products, but it's not going to be a widespread thing here, but this does play back into the profit versus non-profit because the credit union, again, is for the members. They're looking at to price things more accordingly. So if you're just getting a home loan, for example, across the board, the fees associated to a home loan might be more favorable, especially what they call that origination fee. That is the fee it costs or the fee the bank charges to, you know, write your loan. That might be more favorable than with the big bank, things like that, for example. Now, one other very important thing to note here when picking between a bank or a credit union or actually any account that's going to hold your money is what kind of insurances do you have as the consumer? Well, in this case, you have the same amount of insurance between credit union or bank, but they are insured by different folks. So as I'm sure you already know, banks and your bank account is insured by the FDIC. And that is up to $250,000 per person per account that you're going to get insurance. Now, on the other side of it, credit unions are also insured by the NCUA, and that's the exact same amount of insurance, $250,000 per person per bank account. So whichever account you pick, you're safe there, at least up to $250,000. Okay, so two more differences to get through, and then we'll talk about my personal experience with each one. So when you talk about location and ease of access, again, when you're talking about credit unions, generally speaking, credit unions are community-based or regional at best. So you're not going to see a ton of branches everywhere. Even if you travel over another county or two in your local area, you might not have an actual branch if you're someone who likes to go in branch and conduct transactions. Similarly speaking, you might not have, you know, branded ATM access if you travel out of the county or the city. Now, what a lot of credit unions do is they have partner networks of ATMs where, you know, even if you are, you know, in Michigan, you end up in Texas, for example, you can still get your cash out of the ATM should you need to and not be using a credit card for some crazy reason but you can still do it. Now you just have to either you know take note of what ATMs you can use or who's in network versus who's out of network. Of course, there's going to be a fee associated with that. Now on the other side of it, of course, banks are pretty much everywhere, especially the national guys. So again, Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they're everywhere, or at least they don't have branches. They at least have, again, an ATM network set up that you can use. Now, the last big point here is customer service. Credit unions are known for having much better customer service than banks. And I do think this is a little bit of a misnomer. What they generally mean with credit unions is that credit unions, they're not going to have giant call centers. So if I phone into the local credit union, I'm not going to be talking to another person in another country to help me with my problem. I'm literally going to be talking to, you know, Dan from down the street and it's their customer service department is like the same three people. So you call, you could talk to the same person every single time. And additionally, if you're going in branch, they're supposed to be much more personal as well. Now, that's not to say that banks have bad customer service. I have, for the most part, have really good customer service with Chase. 
and American Express when I deal with them probably the most. But again, it's not going to be that personalized touch because it's not going to be Susie on the phone every single time you call. You could call back 10 times. You will get 10 different people at a bank. Okay, so those were some of the biggest differences between banks and credit unions. So as again, as someone who's opened up quite a few accounts with both, what's my overall take? What's been my overall experience? Well, I think on the surface, yes, you do get more personalized customer service with a credit union. For example, if you open up a bank account with a bank, especially one of the national players, you can just open that up online, and as soon as it's open, you're good to go. Sometimes a banker will call you to say, hey, welcome to the bank, let me know if you have any questions, whatever. It's also because they probably want to cross-sell you something, but pretty much you're often good to go, and that's fine for me because I know what I'm doing. The few credit union accounts I've opened, on the other hand, again, for bank bonuses, you submit your application and then you always get the screen that says, thank you for your application. Someone's reviewing it and they will call you back. And then that banker has to call you, talk to you, welcome you to the credit union, that whole thing. Now, don't get me wrong. They are very nice people. I've never had a rude one. It's just so unnecessary, in my opinion, to me. Now, I could be telling you this, and you're like, well, that sounds amazing. I want that personal relationship, that personal phone call. There's nothing wrong with that. But to me, again, I go back to the last point I just made. There's a difference between personable service and efficient service. Efficient service can still be good, which what I prefer. Just get me the answer I need when I need it. We can both go on our merry way versus that personable service. I definitely think that just slows things down and takes longer. Now, one of the other other biggest differences I've noticed is that financial technology capability. Now, I've started out with credit union way back in the day before I ended up switching to larger banks, but you know, it's hit or miss with credit unions. Again, credit unions are not for profits, so it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make as huge an investment as they do in their apps and their banking platforms, things like that, as a Bank of America or a Chase are going to have. Now, it's not to say they haven't closed the gap. I do have some credit unions that actually have really nice chat features and really nice setups and banking apps. The moral of the story here is you use both of them, leverage both of them, and shop all their financial products against each other. And if you get a better deal at a credit union, go with that. If you get a better deal at a bank, go with that. And of course, you can mix and match. There's nothing saying that you can't just become a member of a credit union, get your $5 membership share, get your auto loan going because they give you a better rate. You can definitely make this work to your advantage. So anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, with that Sunday recap episode, it's all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. My question for you guys is let me know which one you prefer down below. Do you like that personalized service you get from a credit union or do you like the big banks but they're quick and efficient and you've learn to work your way around all the fees that they try to charge you. Love to get your thoughts on this. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.